What is going on everybody? In today's video, we are checking out the Desert Treasure 2 boss, the Leviathan. In this guide, I'm gonna take you guys through some hard requirements, some suggested items and stats, as well as all of the boss mechanics, everything you need to know to get to camping this boss. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you. This boss is challenging. It is pretty hard. It's gonna take you a little bit to get used to the rhythm of the boss and to get to a point where you will be getting multiple kill trips, but don't worry. I'm gonna to try to take you from no experience to camping this boss with ease throughout this video. Before we get into today's guide, if you didn't know or if this is your first time checking out one of my videos, I do have an old school RuneScape merch store on Etsy. You can find a link to it in the description below or on the channel banner of my YouTube page. All the stuff in this shop is handmade by me in my office at home and shipped directly to you. Got all kinds of cool stuff, pint glasses, beer mugs, can koozies, stickers, decals, t-shirts, and a bunch more stuff. So if you got some time, check it out. Without further ado, let's get this Leviathan guide started. Hard requirements. The hard requirements for this boss are very simple. All you have to do is finish up Desert Treasure 2, The Fallen Empire. That is the newest quest in Old School RuneScape at the time that this guide is coming out. It's a pretty tough quest, it's pretty long, uh, but you will be able to kill this boss as much as you want after you finish the quest. You will be able to kill it one time during the quest and you will actually get a roll on the monster's loot table, which is pretty new for Jagex. Suggested requirements. I do have some suggested stats and items to make your life a little bit easier while you are camping the Leviathan. We'll start out with the suggested stats. Level 92 ranged. The higher your range, obviously the better it's gonna be, but I would suggest that you have at least level 92. Obviously you can do it with less than level 92, just at 92, I think that gives you the best chance and obviously going higher. Level 74 prayer with the rigor prayer unlocked. Rigor is going to help you a lot here with that damage boosting and accuracy boosting. Level 88 magic. There is a mechanic in this boss fight that you will need to use the shadow barrage spell to stun the Leviathan. Thus, 88 magic is one of my suggested stats. As for the suggested items, the web weaver bow. It is kind of expensive. It's not super, super expensive, but it is uh, between 20 and 30 mil at the time that this video is coming out. It is very nice to have. The Web Weaver Bow special attack does huge damage to the Leviathan at the end of the fight in the Enrage phase. Normally you can finish the boss off with just two special attacks from this, making your life a lot easier. Along with that, you will want to have a Light Bearer. The Light Bearer does restore your special attack energy faster, so you will be able to use two of the Web Weaver Bow special attacks each kill. Location and how to get there. If you have finished the quest and forgotten how to get there, or you're checking out this guide because you're doing the quest and you need to kill the Leviathan, you will have to go to the Guardians of the Rift to get there. You will talk to the Catalytic Guardian, who will then transport you to the Scar, and that is where you will fight the Leviathan. Easiest ways to get there are the Fairy Ring Code DIS, which will teleport you to the Wizard's Tower, or the Amulet of the Eye, I believe it is, which takes you to Guardians of the Rift. Once you get to the Scar, just run straight east, hop over the stepping stones, over to the rowboat, take the rowboat, and you will arrive at the Leviathan's Arena. Suggested Gear Setups In the interest of cutting the time down in this guide, I'm not going to go through all my usual gear setups. However, this image here you can find over on the Strategy Guide page for the Leviathan on the Old School RuneScape Wiki. It lists all of your most effective to least effective gear. However, the least effective is still viable if that is what you have to work with. So over on the left, your best in slot stuff, full Missouri kit, necklace of anguish, Ava's assembler, the Zerite crossbow if you're using a one-handed bow, and the bow of Ferdinin, or Bofa, if you are using a two-handed bow. Twisted buckler in the shield slot, dragon arrows or ruby dragon bolts, E, Zerite vambresses, Pegasia boots, light bear, and a web weaver bow. Most of this stuff is what I am going to be using myself, except for I'm actually going to be using a twisted bow with dragon arrows rather than the Bofa because I don't have one. I did try out the Zerite crossbow and my kill times didn't really improve that much for me to keep that 500 mil item just chilling in my bank. So if you would like to view this without coming back to this video and pausing it all the time, you can find it on the strategy guide page for the Leviathan down near the bottom. Boss room layout. 
As for the Leviathan's arena, it is mostly a square with the Leviathan in the middle. And there is a few things that you will need to know about this room, where things spawn and how they work, which we will go over in the boss mechanics section. But as you can see, mostly a square. There is some jutting edges that kind of jut out uh, to make it not a perfect square but regardless uh you can run anywhere in this arena the leviathan will follow you and track you around the arena depending on where you're moving provided it is not stunned with the shadow barrage spell which we will also go over in the mechanics section mechanics and attacks Starting out our mechanics and attack section is going to be the Leviathan's basic attacks or volleys. Now the first thing I want to note about this is when the Leviathan is attacking you with these attacks, the damage is not calculated until the attack hits you. You have to remember that a lot of other stuff in old school RuneScape, the damage is calculated when the attack is started. But for this, it will not calculate until it hits you. So for the basic attacks, the Leviathan has five volley phases. When you start the fight, you're going to get volley number one. You're going to get six attacks, three ticks apart. That is 1.8 seconds between each attack. It will only be magic and ranged attacks. Volley number two, it's going to speed up a little bit. You're going to get eight attacks, two ticks apart, which is 1.2 seconds between each attack. Only magic and ranged attacks. Volley number three, eight attacks, two ticks apart, magic, ranged, and melee attacks. Now, volley number four and five are what we are aiming to avoid. You can avoid these by using the Shadow Barrage spell on the Leviathan. After volley number three, that will stun the Leviathan. You will run around to the backside of it, range it, and hit it in its weak spot, which will then trigger a special attack, which we will go over. But for the interest of letting you know, volley number four, 12 attacks, one tick apart, 0.6 seconds between each attack, magic and ranged attacks. If you do somehow make it to volley number five alive, that will be 12 attacks, one tick apart, magic, ranged and melee attacks. Before we get into our next mechanic, here is an example of how the fight might go. When you start killing the Leviathan, you are going to go through volleys one, two and three. Three. After the third volley is finished, you'll want to cast a Shadow Barrage on the Leviathan to stun it. You'll run around to the backside, hit it in its weak spot, and then you will trigger a special attack. After the special attack is completed, you will then restart the basic attacks at volley number two. That will be two ticks apart, eight attacks. You will go through volley number two, then volley number three. Then you will stun the Leviathan again, trigger the next special attack. And then if you are still working on finishing the kill, you will then revert back to volley number three, which will be eight attacks, two ticks apart with magic ranged and melee attacks. If you still need more time to get the Leviathan down into its enraged phase, you will then stun it again. And each time after that, it will keep resetting to volley number three. Continuing on with our basic attacks and volleys. After each volley is completed, the Leviathan will roar and drop some boulders from above you. One of these boulders will always come down where you are standing, but you do not have to worry about AOE damage, or if you don't know what that is, area of effect. They only do damage on the tile that they fall on, so you only need to move one tile out of the way. If you're more comfortable moving more than that, that is also fine. The Leviathan will also drop some random ones around the arena. Just make sure you don't run under any of those. On to the special attacks. After you stun the Leviathan and hit it in its weak spot, it is going to trigger a special attack. And that special attack is either going to be the lightning barrage or the smoke blast. It is completely random which one starts the fight or rather which one will come after the first time you stun the Leviathan. However, once you see which one it is, you will know which one is coming next. If it starts with lightning barrage, it'll be smoke blast the second time around. If it starts with smoke blast, it'll be lightning barrage the second time around. And they keep alternating like that throughout the fight. Lightning Barrage to Smoke Blast, back to Lightning Barrage, and then to Smoke Blast. Now there is a nifty trick on how to identify which special attack will be coming first in the fight. After the Leviathan finishes the first volley of attacks, there will be some rocks that fall and they will stay. If these rocks are on the east and west side of the arena, it will be the lightning barrage attack first. If they stay on the north and south sides of the arena, then you know that it will be the smoke blast. So in this clip that you're seeing right here, they're on the east and west, so I know that it will be lightning barrage first. The first one we'll cover in detail is going to be the lightning barrage. Now for the lightning barrage, obviously the leviathan will track you around the room with lightning and it will tail you. 
The way that you can avoid this, there's actually two ways, one of which I don't particularly care for. There is a lightning skip, which I am not going to show in this video. I don't particularly like this because it is risky. If you get a dead click or a little bit of a lag spike, it could mean the end of your kill and a few hundred thousand GP in a death cost. For me, I actually prefer to run around the Leviathan and try to hit it on the corners. Now you can also take the time to run around the Leviathan if you're low on health or low on prayer, use your potions, use your food, get your health and prayer back up. But for me, I'm usually pretty good at it. So I try to get some additional DPS off during the lightning phase attack by hitting at the corners with my twisted bow. Another thing you'll notice throughout this lightning attack is going to be those little blue orbs that the Leviathan is spitting out. So those will hit in random places and do a little bit of damage if you do happen to get hit by one. The way to avoid this is by staying extremely close to the Leviathan. You'll want to stay on the closest square of tiles surrounding the Leviathan and they will not land there. They never do. That is how you avoid all of the damage from the orbs that are thrown out by the Leviathan. After the lightning barrage is over, make sure to get away from those closest tiles because the Leviathan can snap at you with melee and do some heavy damage. So once the attack is over, make sure you get away quickly. The next special attack is a very simple one. This is going to be the smoke blast attack. After you tag the Leviathan in its weak spot for the next special attack, it is going to begin chucking some boulders at you. All you have to do is just click each tile in sequence and just kind of walk away from where you started. Then you want to turn around a little bit and head back the way you came. After that, you'll want to stay behind the boulders. The Leviathan is going to spit out kind of a blast, which is going to cover all the tiles in the arena. The way you avoid this is simply by staying behind the rocks. Our final mechanic, or rather mechanics, because there are going to be a few things that you've seen throughout this fight all happening at the same time here, is when the Leviathan enrages. The Leviathan will enrage at 180 hit points, which is 20% of its maximum health. Once it enrages, it will focus on you intensely, and it will spit out its auto attacks 1.2 seconds apart or two game ticks, and it will only use magic and range throughout this, but you will have to focus on changing your prayers quickly. Now, what else do we have to worry about? The most important part of the Enrage phase is going to be the Abyssal Pathfinder. The Abyssal Pathfinder is that little white orb that you see popping up there once I enrage the Leviathan. The Abyssal Pathfinder has a 3x3 area of effect that you must stand in. If you are standing in this area of effect, it will negate the chip damage that the Leviathan does. The Leviathan's auto attacks will do chip damage even if you are praying correctly, if you are not standing within that three by three square of the Abyssal Pathfinder. If you are not praying correctly, you will still take full damage and you could die very quickly. The Abyssal Pathfinder almost always spawns in the northwest corner of the arena. However, if there is debris blocking the spawn point in the northwest, it will try to spawn at its next clockwise position, which would then be northeast. If you have debris that is in both the northwest and the northeast, it will then try to spawn in the southeast and finally in the southwest if there is debris in all three of those locations. Once it spawns, it will rotate clockwise around the Leviathan. You just have to stay inside of it while managing your prayers and while avoiding the falling rocks. Easy, right? Finally, the Web Weaver Bow. The Web Weaver Bow special attack hits four times in rapid succession and will do massive damage to the Leviathan during its enrage phase, providing you are standing in that AOE block that the Abyssal Pathfinder is giving you. The Web Weaver Bow special attack will only do that damage if you are inside that AOE block. If you do happen to find yourself outside of it and use the special attack, don't be surprised if you hit nothing but zeros and ones. Most of the time, both of these special attacks from the Web Weaver Bow will finish off the Leviathan. So just two attacks, very quick end to the fight. Example fights and kills. Before we start our example fight and kill, I want to check out my personal gear setup as well as a beginner and advanced inventory. So in my gear setup, once again, I am going to be using the Missouri kit with the Necklace of Anguish. 
the Assembler Cape, Twisted Bow, and Dragon Arrows, Zerite Vambrasis, Pegasian Boots, and the Light Bearer to restore my special attack for the Web Weaver Bow. For the beginner inventory, you're going to want to take as much food as possible. This boss does have a tough learning curve, definitely getting used to all the mechanics, especially during the Enrage phase. So just one Divine Ranging Potion, a couple of Prayer Potions, a Stamina Potion, Manta Rays, and you'll want to have some Karambwans in there as well. If you didn't know, you can combo eat other foods with the Karambwan. In this case, if you eat a Manta Ray and then a Karambwan in quick succession, you will heal 38 hit points in just one game tick. As for the rest of the inventory, one-click teleports, super important. Don't try to fight your way through this. Don't try to out-eat the damage. If you find yourself in trouble, just teleport out and start over. It is not worth spending hundreds of thousands, if not millions of GP while learning this boss. Rune Pouch. I have the upgraded one, so I have all of the runes for Shadow Barrage in here, which are Death, Blood, Soul, and Air runes. Obviously, if you don't have the upgraded version, just use the regular one and have like Air runes or something in your inventory. I also have the Max Cape for when I don't need to use a one-click teleport out. As for the advanced inventory, this inventory here generally gets me six to eight kills per trip. I am at that level now since I've been spending quite a bit of time here. You'll also see the Ring of Shadows in there, which is my teleport to the Scar. Everything else, self-explanatory. All right, let's get into this example kill. I'll also be doing the live commentary that I recorded along with the clip. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get this Leviathan kill started. Uh, Divine Raging Potion. I'm already going with that because I accidentally goofed on my last clip. So let's go ahead and get started. Get in here. Turn on my Quick Prayers, which are Range and Rigor. Protect from Range and Rigor. And then we start the kill. So volley number one, three ticks between each attack. All right, and we've got our first Boulder Toss. So I'm just going to move one tile out of the way. And our next one is two ticks between each attack, just mage and range. And our next one, we're going to get melee attacks in there as well. So this is volley number three. And now I'm going to quickly move out of the way. Shadow Barrage, if I get an attack thrown at me, I just want to flick it, nothing. All right, so now I'm going to come over here. We're going to hit the Leviathan in its weak spot. And this is going to be a lightning attack. So I like to run around with this. I'm going to stay as close as I can. I like to hit on the corners. So we'll get a corner hit here. And we'll keep moving. Corner hit. Keep moving. Corner hit. Keep moving. Corner hit. Corner hit. Corner hit. And we're back into volley number two here. So two ticks in between each attack. And then volley number three with melee attacks in there. And we're going to step out of the way, throw a Shadow Barrage to get the stun off. Range prayer real quick. Get over to the weak spot. Now this one is going to turn immediately at me, so I'll be able to get two attacks off here. And then I'm just going to walk to each tile, to about five or six tiles. Then I'm just going to turn around, come back to the end to avoid the smoke attack. And then I'm back on it. Alright, so I am pretty close to spawning... Uh, the white orb that'll come up in the northeast here since nothing is blocking it. But it doesn't look like I'm going to make it, so I'm going to need to stun again. Click range prayer real quick. Come around the back, and this is going to be another lightning attack. Now for this one, since it's going to be somewhat low, I want to start running around. And if I'm going to take it under 180 HP, which my next attack very well could... I want to keep running around until I get close to that northwest corner again. Like I did not just do right there on the misclick, but luckily 186 HP. So now when I get here, throw another attack. I didn't hit. I'm still close enough, so I'm going to throw one more. And there it is. So I'm going to go over here. I want to get in this. And what's our first attack? It's going to be range. Special attack. Watch the damage. We're going to get one more special attack. And the kill is over. So that web weaver bow is, wow, look at that. That is pretty lucky to be getting that while I'm recording this video. 
So that is a Leviathan kill. Super easy, not bad at all once you get some practice. You will need some practice for this. I promise you that your kills are gonna be slow at first, but you will get the hang of it and eventually you'll average about two minutes a kill. So that is going to wrap up my guide to the Leviathan. I hope that this guide has helped point you in the right direction and I hope that it really makes your kills that much easier. As always, I would like to thank all of you for watching. If you have not done so yet, please tap the subscribe button on your way out. If you did enjoy this video, consider leaving a like down below. If you have any questions or comments, I do read them all or as many as I possibly can, and I do try to respond to a good amount of them, so you can also do that down below. Keep an eye out on my YouTube channel for the Vardorvis, the Duke, and the Whisperer guides. I do hope to be putting those out soon. Until next time, Take it easy. Ugh, HP too low. Definitely not guide worthy kill. Uh... Wait, what? Another one? Oh god, range prayer. Yikes. Yo! The back to back. No way. This is the best guide video ever. This never happens to me.